a little later than scheduled, but we've got baseball coming your way tonight. A Magnolia State rivalry, a top 15 matchup, Mississippi State and Ole Miss. Two teams that are near the top of the SEC Western Division standings. Arkansas began their series with LSU last night. Rebels and the Bulldogs both two games back in the loss column, tied for second in the SEC Western Division. Good Friday night and welcome to Oxford, Mississippi. Alongside Matt McLaughlin, I'm Richard Cross. Two teams that are rivals, two teams that are really, really good, and two teams that don't necessarily like each other all that, mu uh, all that much. Could make for a pretty good weekend. Yeah, the last point's probably the biggest one, no doubt. You got everything between great pitching, great hitting, and a bit of rivalry. Should be a great environment here at Swayze Field this weekend. Yeah, two teams that are getting it done offensively this year. You compare the numbers between Mississippi State and Ole Miss. You see Mississippi State second in the SEC with that 316 batting average. Ole Miss checking in at fifth. Home runs both in the top half of the league. Slucking percentage both top five. Ole Miss runs more and runs effectively than Mississippi State does. That's not a big part of what they do offensively. A big part of what they do offensively, though, starts with this guy, the new hit king in the SEC, Jake Mangum, who is quite simply one of the best college baseball players in the country. Yeah, without question, and one of the best that's ever played this game. He's going to be a handful for this Ole Miss pitching staff as he has done some serious damage to them over his career. Should be a great, great matchup all weekend long. Jake Mangum has had a career against Ole Miss, 11-2, so he's only lost twice, hitting 426 against the Rebels, the 23 hits, six doubles in his career. Ole Miss would like to kind of spoil his last trip to Oxford. Mangum at the top of the order. Maybe the biggest surprise this year for Mississippi State, the five-hole hitter Justin Foscu leads the Bulldogs with 13 home runs to go along with that 340 batting average. This Mississippi State lineup will face Ole Miss's Will Etheridge, junior right-hander from Lilburn, Georgia. 6'5", 240 pounds. He's 5-4 and four on the year. And he's been everything for this Ole Miss pitching staff, having to replace three starters. He's been their race, and it'll be a tough test for him today, but he's going to come at them with a mid-90s fastball with great arm side run, and this delivery is very deceptive to the, play, to the players at the plate. So Will Etheridge on the mound. We'll talk a little bit about Ethan Small when we go to the bottom of the first inning. Mississippi State has got an outstanding starting pitcher tonight on the mound as well. Brian DeBrower is the home plate umpire. Christopher Griffith is at first base. Scott Klein out at second base. Tyler Simpson at third. Jake Mangum, the switch hitting senior, steps in and will face Will Etheridge to start things off in game number one of the next to last weekend in SEC play here in 2019. Mangum the senior from Pearl, Mississippi. First pitch he sees, lifts it to left. Thomas Dillard on the run toward the gap, makes the catch. Had to cover a lot of ground and robs Jake Mangum of extra bases to start the ball game. Yeah, Mangum, who's just as a free swinger as there is in this game, gets a breaking ball down, puts a great swing on it. Nice run down there by Dillard. I mean, I'll tell you what, that just that feels like a big out for Will Etheridge here to start the game. And uh, just with so much, how much life Mangum brings to this lineup, we're able to get him out on one pitch uh, will be big for Etheridge moving forward. Now the Mississippi State shortstop, Jordan Westberg, steps in. Takes ball one. Westberg hitting. 319 on the year. Sophomore from New Braunfels, Texas. Four sophomores in the starting lineup for Mississippi State. All with pretty good improvements over a season ago. Westberg, former high school teammate of Ole Miss pitcher James McArthur for the Ole Miss fans watching. Would imagine that was a pretty good Pretty good high school program they had going there in Texas. A lot of big time players out of the state of Texas. Ball on a strike to Jordan Westberg. Grounds it to short. That one's past Gray Kessinger into center field. A one out base hit for Jordan Westberg. to the breaking ball right there. Westbrook did a really good job staying within himself there and staying within inside the ball and just puts a nice swing, puts up the middle, and Bulldogs have something going here in the first. 
Ball hit sharply on the ground. Kessinger pulled toward the six hole a little bit. So one out base runner for a Mississippi State team that really swings it well. Tanner Allen. Bulldogs first baseman will step in. Part of that group of sophomores I was talking about just a moment ago. Six home runs on the year. He's driven in 46. And he lines it the opposite way. That one will fall in front of Thomas Dillard. Mississippi State has hit three balls hard to start this game. Back-to-back -back singles. And there's a the fastball. Ethers tried to come inside there and just did that, that ball. As you see, that arm side run that he has ended up back over the middle of the plate there. And Allen with a nice swing. And as you said, three three good swings in a row here. It'll be up to Etheridge to, to try and get the uh, these Bulldog hitters off balance. Now you get to the cleanup spot in the lineup and Elijah McNamee, veteran on this team, senior from Cypress, Texas. Driven in 44 on the year. Can we take strike one? Mississippi State back to back base hits after the flyout by Jake Mangan to start the ball game. Bulldogs lead the SEC, came into the game with 544 hits on the season. That's best in the league. Also lead the SEC in double, 120 of them on the season as a team. You see the aggressiveness through these first three hitters. That's a big reason why. When they when they get one that they they feel they can get in the zone, they don't they don't miss it very often. It's a lot of base hits, though. My goodness. jammed there. Etheridge working in on the hands. Gets ahead in the count with the ball and two strikes. Top of the first inning. Mangum flew out to left. Kind of sliced one into the left center field gap. Thomas Dillard ran it down. Back-to-back -back singles from Westberg and Tanner Allen. First and second with one out at a 1-2 pitch coming to Elijah McNamee. on the foot will do it again. Mississippi State looking for its 40th win of the season. They come in 39 and 10 on the year. Only one non-conference loss this season for Mississippi State. Gone undefeated in their midweek games. Lost a 1-0 game to Southern Miss back on February the 22nd. Swing and a miss. Etheridge elevates the fastball and gets a swing and miss from McNamee. Yeah, really good pitch there by Etheridge. He came in, got on McNamee's hands, and then he put right back in. I think you may see the Rebels going uh, inside on McNamee a lot. Make sure he cannot get his hands extended as he does a lot of damage if he's able to do that. Big strike out there for Etheridge. Not an easy guy to get out here as Justin Foscu steps in. Thirteen home runs on the year for Justin Foscu. He takes strike one, nips the outside corner. Foscu, the sophomore from Huntsville, Alabama, three home runs a season ago. All three of them were on the road. This year he's got 13 home runs, and 10 of the 13 have come at Duty Noble in Starkville. Back breaking balls away to start the at bat. Foskey also with an average bump from year to year of 100 points. Without question, has to be the most improved player on this Mississippi State team. For a guy who had a pretty good year last year, but his numbers really jump off the page at you. Tied for second in the SEC with 13 home runs. Tied, or he stands alone in fifth with. 52 RBIs. Not going to get one here, though. Pops it up on the infield. Second baseman for Ole Miss, Justin Bench, getting his first start of the season. Makes the catch for the out. Mississippi State strands a couple. 
Ethan Small on the mound for Mississippi State. The left-hander coming off a dazzling performance against Texas A&M. Seven innings, did not allow a run, did not allow a hit. Baffled the Aggies all day long last Friday. Mississippi State won the series in Texas A&M. The junior from Lexington, Tennessee, fourth year junior at Mississippi State has been absolutely dynamite this year. Six and one on the season. He's five and one in SEC play. Yeah, he's been one of the best there is in this game. And uh, that fastball of his, which makes him so unique, it's not a, it's not going to jump off the radar gun, but he will blow it by these Ole Miss hitters, and he's done it all year long to everyone else. But he does have that changeup, which is his, that's his pitch when he needs an out. And uh, as you said, these strikeout numbers he has are gaudy. There's no question. 122 strikeouts. 18 walks on the season. But he is facing a good lineup tonight for Ole Miss. Anthony Servideo batting leadoff. Gray Kessinger leading the SEC in league games with a 436 average. You look, you see a new name down there near the bottom of the lineup in the eight hole. Justin Bench getting his first start of the season. Also, you notice Ryan Olenek's name not in the lineup. He is sick. And the hope is that at some point this weekend he will be able to make it back on the field for Ole Miss, but that is not certain at this point. He is on the 27-man dress list for the weekend for the Rebels. First pitch to Servideo bounces in, a 90-mile-an-hour fastball. Yeah, I'm interested to see how this Ole Miss lineup approaches small. As we said, that fastball, if it's elevated, it is tough to catch up with. We'll see if they're able to keep Small down in the zone and make sure that they're getting their pitch early in the count. Mr. Video here gets a plus 2 count here for himself. Anthony Servideo, important to be on base at the top of the order. He's got 19 stolen bases on the year. Comes up empty on the fastball away. Small's a guy, he's going to use that fastball. That's his pitch. He's going to, three-fourths of his pitches are going to be that fastball that he loves so much. As you saw right there, he held his delivery. He brought his leg up. He's trying to throw those, these Ole Miss hitters off their timing. Um, and you'll see him do that frequently throughout the game. Ethan Small had 122 strikeouts a year ago and 101 and a third innings. He's sitting on 122 coming into this game tonight. Rolls away. A little more juice on the fastball. The count goes full now to Anthony Servideo. 73 innings pitched, 122 strikeouts. And he gets another one. Swing and a miss from Servideo on a fastball outer half. That's what we were just alluding to a little bit ago in that fastball. Again, at 91, it's a, it's a good fastball, but for that, you wouldn't expect as many strikeouts. But right there, Servideo wasn't able to catch up to it. Um, and we'll see him continually go to that fastball up in the zone. That was a good at bat there for Anthony Servideo as well. One thing that Small has had a tough time with is pitch count. When you're a big strikeout guy, that's, that's one of the issues you run into. As you saw him quick pitch Kessinger right there. First pitch to Gray Kessinger is a strike. Kessinger looked at the numbers in the SEC, hitting 436 with 44 hits in league games only. Tops in the SEC in both of those categories. Kessinger pops it up right side, shallow right field. McNamee coming in, and quickly there are two away. Yeah, you saw two exactly polar opposite deliveries there. From small, a quick pitch on the first pitch where Kessinger wasn't quite ready. Call gets the call on the outside corner, then a very slow, methodical delivery on that one. Threw Kessinger off a little bit to get him fly out to right field. Two down for Tyler Keenan, a lefty on lefty matchup here for the sophomore from Clayton, North Carolina. Keenan takes ball one. Ball 
long pause that time from Ethan Small, and he misses away 2 0. Understand it's about varying your timing and certainly making hitters uncomfortable. It feels like you would lose so much momentum to the plate. It's all about balance. And again, for a guy like Keenan, who's got a pretty big leg kick, that's a big deal as you see another quick pitch, but a nice swing by Tyler Keenan into the left center gap. Tyler Keenan going to try and turn it into two. The throw comes in, cut off the throw to second in time. Keenan kind of hit and stuck when he tried to slide into second, tried to wave his arm. A good relay throw. And, and really a two-out single for Tyler Keenan, but he's erased trying to stretch it into a double. Mangum hits it into Westberg, puts it on the money. The tag is in time. Scoreless after an inning. Mississippi State gets a couple of hits in the top of the first inning. Ole Miss gets a two-out base hit in the bottom of the first. Thomas, or excuse me, uh, Tyler Keenan thrown out, trying to get to second and turn a single into a double. So scoreless after one, Rowdy Jordan leading off for Mississippi State. Pops it to left. Dillard coming in hard, and he'll get there and make the catch. Good life on that fastball from Etheridge. Another first pitch out to start the inning. He was able to work out of a jam uh, this last go round. That's important for Will to keep that, that pitch count down. Will Etheridge has wins this year against Wright State, Long Beach State, UAB. And then in the SEC wins against Alabama and Kentucky. All four of his losses have come in league play as well. Missouri, Arkansas, Auburn, and LSU. Justin Skelton, one home run away from double digits on the year. Takes Stroud, ball one. Take your pardon. Count even to the ball and a strike to Dustin Skelton. Two good catchers in this game tonight. Cooper Johnson behind the plate for Ole Miss. Skelton for Mississippi State. Yeah, right on cue. Johnson with a nice little backhand pick right there and a 50-foot breaking ball. One hopper to Keenan at third. Goes over to Kevin Graham. And there are two down in the inning. Chris Labonis is in his first season and, and Starkville as the head coach took the program over last June. After a successful four-year stint at Indiana, took Hoosiers to regional play, uh, to regionals in three or four seasons. Was assistant for a while on Dan McDonald's staff at Louisville. As an assistant, helped that Louisville team get to three College World Series: 2007, 2013, 2014. And he inherited a pretty good baseball team when he. Sure did. A lot of sparkle. Did a great job at Indiana, but he came into a really good situation. There's no question, but a, a very, very good, good baseball coach. No question. 0 oh and 2 now to Gunnar Halter, the DH, batting in the eight hole. Of course, Mississippi State made the run to Omaha. There was question at the end of the year if they were even going to be able to get into the NCAA tournament. They swept Florida last year in the final weekend of the season. Swing and a miss. Easy inning for Will Etheridge. Second strike out of the game for Etheridge. Scoreless as we go to the bottom of the second. Currently 63 degrees, cloudy, a little bit of fog rolling in over Swayze Field tonight. Crowd smaller than it would have been. The game had started on time and you hadn't had rain for most of the day. But Still pretty good crowd on this Friday night of graduation weekend at Ole Miss. Ole Miss with four seniors that are graduating tomorrow. Ryan Olenek, Parker Caracy, Connor Green, and Chase Cockrell. First pitch is a ball to Thomas Dillard. Dillard, the junior from Oxford High School. 
part of the number one recruiting class in the country three years ago. This is the off-speed pitch there, strike one. Yeah, it's one of those really good change-ups that Small has. I'm looking forward to this matchup tonight. As Dillard's a fastball guy. He's looking for something up in the zone. As so we see get a fastball and a change-up back-to-back, and Small goes right back to that fastball in the outside corner. Dillard now behind in the count, a ball and two strikes. It'll be interesting to see if Small sticks with the fastball. He is predominantly like 80, 85 percent fastballs. That one ran in on the hands of Thomas Dillard. And it was called a foul ball. Mike Bianco coming out. I think he wants a little explanation from Do uh, Brian DeBrawer, the home plate umpire. Mike Bianco in his 19th season at Ole Miss as the head coach, 742 wins. Barr will call the rest of the umpiring crew in. It's like it's the bottom hand, the, the right hand, which is the top hand on the bat. Yeah, tough to see from that angle, but Coach Bianco was talking the umpire could see that he said that it had hit the bat obviously was his take on it as well not have a review so this is a coach's challenge from mike bianco to see if dillard was hit by the pitch it could have clipped his finger and got the bat I and mean, that's just tough to tell exactly where it where it got dillard react immediately as if it hit his hand but it does look like it's up on the barrel a little bit. I don't know that. I'm kind of past the point of trying to guess on <laughs> what these replays are going to turn in, but I don't know that you've seen anything that would give you the ability to overturn the call that was made in the field. And looking at it in Birmingham and SEC replay center. Maybe we can listen to it, see if that gives us anything. Take a listen. I got nothing for you there. <laughs> no. Dillard acted like he got his hand. The umpire was pretty definitive in his uh, initial assessment of what happened. Well, you yeah. also saw an immediate reaction from Ethan Small. He was kind of pointing as if to think that it was a foul ball. So either you're going to have another one-two pitch coming to Thomas Dillard, or he will be given first base. Take a look one more time, see if you can see anything in re real time here. The one thing, too, Thomas offered at the pitch, so a lot of times that, uh, that throws the umpire's vision of where the ball hit. If, if Thomas just sits in there and he, you know, he's trying to hold his ground in the box and it hits him, he's probably getting first base. But since he offered at it, a lot of times umpires will get the pitcher the benefit of the doubt on that one. And you remember growing up, you'd hear that old adage, oh, the hand's part of the bat. <laughs> it's no, no, the hand is not part of the bat. You get hit on the hand. They've said foul ball. And so Thomas Dillard will stay at home plate. And we will do it again. The ruling coming from Scott Klein, the crew chief. Yeah, so Small came inside on that fastball right there. Really got in on Thomas. We'll see if that changeup comes back on the outside. 1-2 pitch, fouled away. Stuck at the fastball. Registered on the gun at 97. I'm wondering if it may have picked up an exit speed there. They probably most likely. Dillard, ground ball up the middle, base hit. It's back to back base hits for Ole Miss. One to end the first, one to start the second, and two hard hit balls. Yeah, just a fastball there down and away. Dillard does a good job staying down on the ball, driving it right back up the box. 
you saw small with a little bit longer delivery and again sometimes that can be effective and sometimes it can speed a guy's bat up as you saw dillard having a tough time getting the barrel to the ball he's fouled off a few pitches and he's able to just deliver one right back up the box cooper johnson stepping in pretty pretty good matchup here with Rebel catcher Cooper Johnson, junior from Mundelein, Illinois. Excuse me, Illinois. This season offensively by a long shot for Cooper Johnson. Takes that pitch just off the plate for ball one. I think that's one that Ethan Small wanted. Small is a guy that doesn't hold runners particularly well for a left-handed pitcher, which you might imagine, but a little bit slower delivery time to the plate. We'll see how Ole Miss plays it uh, with Diller, very efficient base runner. Two guys that are reigning players of the week in the SEC. Cooper Johnson named player of the week. Ethan Small, pitcher of the week. Seven innings, no hits, scoreless in College Station. Cooper Johnson in the crazy win for Ole Miss on Sunday against LSU. Four for five with four driven in and four runs scored. You don't get uh, reigning pitcher or hitter matchups too often there. Uh, should be a fun one all night. Johnson's been on fire of late for this Ole Miss lineup. Thomas Dillard over at first base, 12 of 13 on the year. And stolen bases. Johnson, fly ball to shallow center. Jake Mangum coming in, dives for it, and makes the catch. Not only can he hit, Jake Mangum, one of the best defensive center fielders that you'll find anywhere. Yeah, and you can see Mangum, he actually jumps back a couple steps. He's still able to recover. It makes just an unbelievable diving play. We talked about in the opener. He does it all for them. And those types of plays right there play large late in games when Ole Miss could have had two guys on and nobody out with Cole Zabowski coming to the plate. Saw time right there. Gilbert was sprinting to shortstop. And Westbrook stopped him and sent him back, and the umpire ended up calling time. It was interesting. You could see maybe a shift that was coming that was called off. Yeah, Mississippi State, a team that shifts a lot. They elect not to shift here, though, with Thomas Dillard at first and Zabowski at the plate. And Cole Zabowski, a guy that I would think you really would have to think twice about shifting because of his – not only ability, but his willingness to go the opposite way. Yeah, he can pull it. He can hit it the other way. He can pull for power. He can hit for power the other way. So it's just tough. you got to play the numbers the best you can. And the one thing, too, when you're, when you're talking about shifting, you also have a guy with a fastball that people have a hard time squaring up. So odds are Zabowski's going to hit the ball the other way as opposed to pulling the ball. So I think you may have seen Gilbert there decide, thinking they would do that and then thinking about Zabowski maybe pulling the ball, decided to send him back. 1-1 with Dillard at first. Olszewski has got 10 home runs on the year. Seven of those 10 home runs have come in league play. Had one on Sunday against LSU, a day in which he was four for six with four runs scored and the long ball. Zabowski's second in SEC playing slugging percentage. He's had, he's racked up a lot of extra base hits and home runs in, in league play and been just a stalwart for this Ole Miss lineup. And at times when this lineup has struggled, he's been a guy in the middle that they've relied on really heavily throughout the most of this season. Seven home runs, seven doubles in SEC play. Thomas Dillard goes, the throw to second, in time, Dillard is out. That's the second base runner that Ole Miss has lost tonight. Tyler Keenan trying to stretch a single into a double in the first, and Dustin Skelton throws out Thomas Dillard. Just a laser by Skelton. I mean, Dillard got a pretty good jump. Small was quicker to the plate there. But my goodness, what a throw. Not even close. 
We'll see State now jumping into that shift where I think Gilbert was headed at the beginning of this at bat. Get a look at what Mississippi State is doing defensively. Westberg, the shortstop, stays there at short. It's almost kind of like you've got a, a short fielder out in right with the second baseman. Gilbert moves over to kind of a second base spot up the middle. Swing and a miss. Strikeout ends the inning. It was promising to start with Thomas Dillard's leadoff single. Fly out from Johnson. Dillard caught stealing and a strikeout to end the inning. Tomorrow at 3 Eastern, 2 Central. It's game two of a big three-game series between two of the top teams in the East. Number 24, Tennessee, taking on Florida at McKeithen Stadium in Gainesville. Florida's postseason hopes on life support. That game on the SEC Network and also available on the ESPN app. Tonight, game one of the series, Gators get the win 10-9. to nine. Florida with... Four runs in the bottom of the seventh, two in the bottom of the eighth. They were trailing nine to three going into the bottom of the seventh inning, and they get a 10-9 win. Well, that's a tough loss for Tennessee. Tough loss. They're going to have to bounce back, and then they host this Ole Miss team to end SEC play, so it won't get much easier from here on out. Heads up. Nine-hole hitter, hitter Marshall Gilbert lines that one. Into the Ole Miss dugout. Will Etheridge had a strikeout in the first, a strikeout in the second. Gilbert, the nine hole hitter. Mississippi State had two base runners in the top of the first inning after a flyout from Mangum to start the ball game. Back to back singles from Westberg and Tanner Allen. Mm. The reaction from Cooper Johnson looked like he was ready to throw that one down to third. He popped up ready to go there. That was a nice pitch by Etheridge on the inside part of the plate, though. Light rain has begun to fall here at Swayze Field. I've had a lot of rain yesterday and today. by Gilbert. And for the last couple of innings, Ethers has been able to get a leadoff out with the first pitch he's thrown. Gilbert now about to see his sixth pitch of the at-bat. Just off the plate. And it's a leadoff walk to Marshall Gilbert and the nine hole to start the inning. But three pitches ago, Etheridge and Cooper Johnson thought they had a called strike three, did not get the call. Brian DeBrower, the home plate umpire. And a good at bat by Marshall Gilbert, making his fifth consecutive start at third base. And then all of a sudden, the SEC hit king coming up with a leadoff guy at first base. Jake Mangum hit it into the left center field gap. Thomas Dillard ran it down. First pitch that he saw, first pitch of the game. This one's grounded too short. Chance for two. Six, four, three. Kevin Graham able to hold the bag at first. That's a big double play for the Rebels. Huge double play, and that was a big time turn by Gray Kessinger at second or at shortstop there. As you see him get his body over, does gives a nice ball into Justin Bench, who's able to get a quick turn there. And a huge double play for Will Etheridge here in the top of the third inning. That is the first double play that Jake Mangum has grounded into this season. Chris Lamonis came out and 
think asked if the umpires might talk about it. He did not request a review. Base is empty at two down. And Jordan Westberg coming to the plate. And you don't turn that against a guy like Mangum without a really quick feed, just as Kessinger did. Put it in a great spot for Bench to be able to do a quick turn at second. And if you missed it earlier, Justin Bench making his first start of the season. He's the second baseman for Ole Miss. He's played in six ball games, but this is the first game that he's played in since March the 5th. Broke the middle finger on his right hand in the game against Little Rock. Justin Bench in high school from his sophomore year through the end of his senior season made only one error. He's a good defensive player. Yeah, without question, it, it didn't get any better than that turn that he had at second. It shows great defensive skills there. This ball sawed off, shallow left. That's going to fall in off the glove of Kessinger. Boy, he nearly stole that base hit from Jordan Westberg. That play was almost, he, it was like Houdini-like for him to get out there. I thought he almost had it, just throws his glove there at the last, last second. Tremendous hand-eye coordination. He almost pulls off one of the best plays we might have seen all weekend. Third hit of the game for Mississippi State. Jordan Westberg, two for two in the game. Jam shot just beyond the reach of Gray Kessinger. And now you get to Tanner Allen, who also singled his first time up. Westberg four for four and stolen bases. You touched on in the opener. Not a huge part of their game, but we'll see if they're aggressive here with two outs. I told you Florida came from behind. It was a combined six runs in the seventh and the eighth to beat Tennessee 10 to nine. No trouble for Georgia tonight. They're on the road against Auburn. They get an 11 to 2 win with Tony Losey on the mound. And what a pitching matchup you've got on the Plains tomorrow with Emerson Hancock going for Georgia and Tanner Burns pitching for Auburn. A little late life on that fastball to get it to 1 and 2. Yeah, no question. You can see Allen there. Thought that ball was coming in. It talks a lot about that arm side run. And just it's tough on both right handed and left handed hitters, but right there you see really effective against Allen to get himself in a good count. Westberg at first, a one two pitch coming to Allen. It's a piece of it and stays alive. Mississippi State 39 and 10 overall on the year. And those 10 losses, four of them have been by one run. So we've got four one run losses on the year. The one, two. Check swing foul ball by Tanner Allen. Two awkward swings in a row by Allen. I'm not sure if he's having a tough time picking the, the ball up out of Ather's hand, but called those emergency cuts back back in the day. And yeah. And you know, Matt, two pitches that were probably out of the zone, but kind of got to appreciate a pitcher that says, I'm not going to leave it up to the umpire to say yes or no. I'll just spoil the pitch and be sure that I can get to see another one. <laughs> Off the plate, two and two. It's kind of a foggy night now. Not sure how much it's going to affect these hitters, but it does kind of get the sense that it might be, you might have a tough time if you're up there just kind of locking in on that on that window from the pitcher's arm, arm action. 2-2. Two -two. 
40th pitch of the game there from Will Etheridge. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up as Tanner Allen continues to battle. Line one to left, his first time up. Two two again. Second full count of the inning, Marshall Gilbert, leadoff man for Mississippi State here in the third, earned a full count walk. Jake Mangum grounded into his first double play of the entire season. Westberg dropped one into left. For a two-out base hit and now a full count coming to Allen. He lifts it to right field, pretty well hit. Servideo on the run, over his head. One hops the wall. Mississippi State going to try to score. Throw will not come to the plate with two outs. Westberg was moving on contact, and the Bulldogs take a 1-0 lead. And that ball was absolutely crushed. Etheridge went back to the changeup there. Interesting after the hit, Allen was behind on several fastballs in a row. He's able to take that changeup, get, arm get his arms out there and extend it, just really hammers one into right field for an early 1-0 lead for the Bulldogs. 47th RBI of the year for Tanner Allen. He's two for two in the game. It's his 18th multi-hit game of the season. Now Elijah McNamee. Jordan Westberg got kind of the the double head start, not only two out in the inning, but a full count. So he was going not just off the bat, but on the pitch, had a big jump. And as a result, able to score from first on the double to right. And that ball was hit on a, on a rope too. And he was able to get it past a really good defender in right field, Anthony Servideo. It's interesting looking through McNamee's number, who had a great year last year. Couldn't help but notice how was, even though he struck out in that first about strikeouts are down for him and his walks are way up. 21 less Ks than last year now and 19 more walks. McNamee and on the hands, fouls it back. Breaking ball there by Etheridge after getting McNamee to foul off that fastball. It was a little late on that breaking ball as it kind of broke back in from the backup breaker there. We'll see if Etheridge goes back to the fastball, if he goes back to that breaking ball down in the zone. 2-2. Two -two. Chopper to third, that is foul. With Ryan Olenek out with an illness tonight, maybe for the weekend, but certainly for tonight. Ole Miss has Thomas Dillard in left field, Josh Hall getting the start in center, and Anthony Servideo in right. Also got Justin Bench making his first start of the season at second base. 2-2, Two -two. popped up right side. Bench will make the catch, and that ends the inning. And Mississippi State gets a couple of two-out base hits, a single by Westberg, an RBI double from Tanner Allen to take an early lead. Headlines around the SEC. Vanderbilt and Arkansas on top of their respective divisions and both playing really good baseball right now. Florida Gators, they've been to Omaha seven of the last nine years. Can they get to the NCAA tournament, to a regional? And also the race for the final spot, Alabama, Kentucky, South Carolina battling it out. Florida gets a win tonight against Tennessee. You see Kentucky, Alabama, South Carolina fighting for that last spot. Right now it would be Kentucky 
The Wildcats and the Gamecocks playing that game on the SEC Network tonight. And South Carolina took game one, five to four. South Carolina moves into a tie. You saw it there on the standings at six and 18 with Kentucky. Breaking ball strike to Kevin Graham. No balls and two strikes to the Rebels' first baseman. That was the first breaking ball we might have seen out of small tonight. Fastball up. Kevin Graham waves at it. Looked like he saw it very well in that at bat. Third strike out of the game for Ethan Small. Yeah, he went for that big breaker and then held that delivery again, just timing. Anything elevated from small, really, for these Ole Miss hitters, it's going to be up. It's going to seem like it's up in the mid to upper 90s with the spin rate that he gets out of that pitch. First at bat of the game for Justin Bench. Bench has played in six games this year. Four times he's come in at second base. Twice he has been a pinch hitter. It's like a new season for Bench after that much time off. One for four on the year. If I'm not mistaken, that one hit was a walk-off. It's against Long Beach State. Not bad for your for your only one of the year. And after not playing for a little over two months, the first guy you get to see in live action. Ethan Small, who is now sitting on 125 strikeouts. Welcome back, Justin. All right, here's the Golden Spikes Award finalist for you. Have a good game. I'm sure he is just fired up to be out there playing baseball, though, no question. Lifted down the right field line. Long run for McNamee. That ball, though, eases foul. Just a bench hit that one a long way. A little late. One of those is a hitter where you say, stay fair, stay <laughs> fair, stay. Just kind of jogging down the line. Trying to do everything he can to keep it foul. But a good swing by Bench is, I'm sure, it's tough. Not not just coming back off of a pitcher of Small's, you know, his capabilities, but just coming back in general to get your timing is tough, let alone going up against one of the elite pitchers in the league. Strike three call. Bench takes the fastball at maybe just below the knees, inside corner. What a great location. Two down in the inning. Yeah, it was down and in. Not a whole lot halter that bench is going to do to that one anyway. Just goes to show you just how much command Small has on the mound. Really, really good pitch on the inside corner. Fourth strike out of the game for Ethan Small. Ole Miss has gotten a couple of hits off of him. But because a couple of base runners have been erased, Ethan Small has faced the minimum so far. Josh Hall shows bunt, takes strike one. This guy can fly. Freshman from Birmingham. Played at Homewood High School and stole 224 bases in his high school career. It's an all-time high school record. Coming off of a weekend where he had possibly the biggest hit for this Ole Miss team after giving up the lead in the, in the ninth inning, comes back and drives in two. Really, really could be one of those moments that sparks this lineup. 1-1 one, one to Hall. That tied him up with the fastball up. Ole Miss got a two-out single from Tyler Keenan in the first inning. He was thrown out trying to stretch it into a double. Leadoff single from Thomas Dillard in the second. He was caught stealing. Four strikeouts so far for Ethan Small. The 1-2 off the plate.
Strike three called. Back to back strikeouts looking. Ethan Small strikes out the side. He has struck out four in a row. He's painting right now. Mm. Mississippi State leads it 1 0 after three. All somewhere in Middle America. Selection show on Memorial Day, May 27th. We'll all be watching 16 regional sites. Seated 1 through 16, the Super Regionals, second weekend in the month of June. Certainly a chance that both of these baseball teams will be hosting postseason games at their part. Mississippi State almost a lock at this point to host and certainly currently projected to be a national seed, one of those top eight seeds, which of course means if they win the regional, they host the super regional as well. Ole Miss projected by most after their series win in Baton Rouge last weekend as a regional host site as well. 0-2 to Foscu, swing and a miss. There's a strikeout from Will Etheridge to start the fourth. Yeah, really good breaking ball there by Will. Just nasty slider. Down and away, Foscu just unable to, to really hold up there. But that, that hole at bat was really well set up by Etheridge to get that 0-2 breaking ball in the outside corner. Big first out for him here in the top of the fourth. Rowdy Jordan flew out to left his first time up, takes strike one. If there's a better baseball name than Rowdy Jordan, I don't know what it is. Just off the corner, count of evens at one and one to Jordan. Got the glasses going, got the eye black going. Hits it sharply on the ground to short Kessinger over the first, and there are two down here in the fourth. Hey, right now, so far in this inning, Etheridge is really pinpointing his spots, working in and out, up and down. Really able to get out in front of these Mississippi State hitters who have been really aggress aggressive with him through the first time through the order. away for ball one to Dustin Skelton. Skelton grounded out to Keenan at third base, his first time up. It's a strike here. Only one run in the ball game. It belongs to Mississippi State, an RBI double from Tanner Allen on a full count pitch with two outs in the bottom of the third. He scored Jordan Westberg. Ole Miss had a couple of base runners early. Ethan Small has really gotten on track in the last couple of innings. He struck out the last four batters that he's faced. Will Etheridge trying to have an easy fourth with two down and a 2-1 count, but misses there for ball three to Skelton. The trajectory of Dustin Skelton's career has been impressive. He's played a lot. He hasn't necessarily been an everyday starter in the two previous seasons, but his batting average as he chops it to third, has gone from 206 to 238 to 311 this season. And he's 0 for 2 tonight. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Mississippi State leading 1 0. Run on four hits for Mississippi State. Ole Miss, no runs, couple of hits. Neither team has committed an error so far tonight as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. We, we got to see if we can get security or something back here in the door. I mean, anybody will walk in. <laughs> see, we got Ruby. Hey, Ruby. David DeLucci joins us, my old partner here on the SEC Network, co-host of Rally Cap on the SEC Network, and as of tomorrow, officially a college right. graduate. Congratulations, right. my Thank man. Thank you. Thank you. 24 years it took. <laughs> 24 years. But you know what? I, I'm going to have a piece of paper that says that uh, – I earned a degree from the University of Mississippi, and that's extremely important. It was important to my family. It was important to me. 
Uh, it was important for the school to offer me a scholarship and the opportunity to get an education here. So I'm going to fulfill my commitment. I was on the extended plan also, but it was like <laughs> six and a half years. It wasn't 24 <laughs> years. Well, I was kind of busy. I was uh, – <laughs> I had a. Uh, there was a another, World Series to win out there. Career, right? yeah, 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 yeah. David DeLucci, an all, all American at Ole Miss in 1995, SEC legend last year at the SEC tournament, 13-year big league veteran, and a dad now. Also. Yeah, man, that's my the most important job. First pitch to Anthony Servidio popped up. Third base side, and Skelton can't grab it. What a tough condition tonight. Foggy, hazy, it's a little rainy. We've had some rain on and off throughout uh, the ball game. Maybe fortunate to be playing this one at all. Yeah, with all the rain over the last few days, but this fog makes it a tough sky for anybody. Except for this guy in the booth. He'd run him, he runs him down no matter what the conditions no. are. <laughs> I don't know about that. This reminds me of the uh, SEC tournament in Hoover, right? This was almost every night the conditions that yeah. the teams played in. They had a fog out one night, Florida versus LSU. Right. <laughs> no balls and two strikes to uh, to Anthony Servidio. I know that um, pitch coming here. Neat story online at OleMissSports.com. I think you've told the story here before. Certainly you and I have talked about it. But getting this degree was important for you. It was important for your family. But there was a promise that meant a lot to you that kind of kept you going on, on this thing, getting to the finish line. Yeah. Uh, my, my late grandfather, uh, who was a big mentor in my life, he actually ran a softball league. And he would take me out there every day and, and teach me how to play baseball and softball and um, uh, was a huge Ole Miss fan after I got here and, and he, he kept on me he said you know no matter what happens as my baseball career developed and it became evident that I was going to have the opportunity to play at the next level he says no matter what if if you go play pro and you don't get that degree promise me that you'll go back and finish your education and I said yes I'll make that promise and um my grandfather, who had basically seen me play every single game ever since I was in Little League, did not get to see me play a single professional game, and he passed away mm. um, right before I made it to the major leagues. And I held my promise and my commitment to, to him and to Ole Miss, and I'm fulfilling it tomorrow. I know he'll be there watching me. He'll probably walk across the stage with me uh, while I get that degree. Check swing, all third strike on Anthony Servideo. Couldn't hold up on that one. No appeal, just called by the home plate umpire. Take another look. Close, probably the right call. Those are tough as a hitter, right? Man, I tell you, it, it, uh, I don't believe that, that the rule in the rule book is defined what a check swing is, right? It's the, it, is it breaking the wrist or is it crossing home plate? So. As a hitter, you never think that you you check that <laughs> <Yeah>. swing. <laughs> Every pitcher's ever thought you checked that That's swing. Right. That was a full swing. And by rule, there's technically no thing as a, there's no such thing as a check swing, you know, by the technical standpoint. But yeah, it just seems like every umpire has their own definition of it. Makes it tough on any hitter. Hard enough when you got a guy like this on the mound too. Oh man, one of the, one of the best strikeout pitchers in the nation, right there. He has struck out five in a row, six in the ball game. Now 128 strikeouts in 76 and a third. He's closing in on that two strikeouts and inning average. David, I know you've seen a bunch of the teams in the SEC. It's a heck of a matchup this weekend, not just rivals in state, but top 15 teams and teams that have both got big-time postseason aspirations. Yeah, the, the implications in series as the season comes to a close are, are gigantic, and, and Ole Miss took a step forward by winning the series against LSU last weekend. It put them back in the contention to possibly host a regional, and now that they're in that position, a series win here uh, and, and, a, and a series win next weekend may elevate Ole Miss to a national seed. So every single game matters. Uh, and when you face a team like Mississippi State, uh, it matters even more for what State has done during the course of the year. Their RPI is incredible. 
top to bottom. Mississippi State is one of the better clubs in the nation. So if Ole Miss can can get a series win, that would be humongous. Yeah, they like said they really played their way back into it last week. Be huge for for them. It just feels like a big it'd be a big confidence booster, obviously. But man, to just be in the hunt there for that national seed means a lot down the stretch. Kessinger fouls back another Mississippi State at number four currently in the RP or excuse me number five in the RPI. Look at that, Vandy at two, Arkansas at four, Mississippi State at five, Georgia at six, Tennessee tough loss tonight at Florida, and then Ole Miss at number eighteen. I mean, I, I had this conversation on ESPN this morning. How can anyone from from any part of this country say the SEC is not strong? Kessinger out in front of that one. Good at bat, good battle going here between the top hitter in SEC games and top strikeout guy in the league. Yeah, without question, top to bottom, the league is just it's brutal. It's it, absolutely it brutal. Ben McDonald always hashtags a 30-game grind. I think that puts it about as good as it, it can be put. Yep, most definitely. Another full count coming to Kessinger. Round ball off the glove of Gilbert at third. Stays with it, but no chance to make a play. And Ole Miss has a one-out base runner. Kessinger reaches base safely for the 38th consecutive game. Yeah, you saw Small go continuously to that fastball. Kessinger was able to just fight him off and put some really good swings and really earned an off-speed pitch there. As Small didn't have anywhere else to go, he's able to get one in the hole and a, a, a big base runner, which seems like it's been a while for this Ole Miss lineup. Now Tyler Keenan coming to the plate. So what does tomorrow look like for uh, for you? Commencement has been moved to the Indoors. pavilion instead of from uh, in the Grove. Yep, we uh, we will have a, a breakfast in the morning. Um, Athletic Director Ross Bjork will speak to the athletes that are graduating tomorrow. And um, pitch in the dirt, runner goes. Another good throw by Skelton, and Kessinger gets in safely. Well, that was close. Skelton's got a cannon. He sure does. That was a great dirt ball read. That shouldn't even have been close. Skelton's mm -hmm. able to not only make it close, but they may go for a review here. Absolute laser. I think he's in there, though, with a nice slide. Kessinger's telling him I was in there. Got a review at second base, and Kessinger goes to the outside part of the bag, reaches out with the right hand. Life is an umpire. You got two guys in maroon saying he's out, one guy in blue saying he's safe. Pretty darn close. I think he got that hand in there. I, yeah, I think the oven mitt made it before the <laughs> ball did. Safe. Which was a call on the field by Scott Klein. So can't get over the fact that that was even close. I mean, Kessinger, no hesitation on that dirt ball read. A couple of plus arms behind the plate tonight with Skelton and Cooper Johnson. You know, I mean, it, this goes back to the strength of the SEC. It is it, in all phases of the game. You look at what Mississippi State puts out there defensively. They're one of the better teams. The catchers on both of these teams can limit the opposition's run production and stolen bases. Skelton's already done it once tonight. Mangum did it earlier on a nice relay. Call is upheld. They say Kessinger's safe at second base, so we've had two reviews, and twice the call on the field has stood. Joined in the booth by David DeLucci, who will graduate officially tomorrow, and then will hustle off to Charlotte for uh, an SEC Network studio duties and then rally cap. Rally cap on Sunday and, and um, tune in because uh, I've been challenged to do a dance on <laughs> Sunday that uh, my, my dance partner right here has been helping me on. So it's a fun show to recap the week in softball and baseball. Keenan, big swing, comes up empty. Rally cap coming your way Sunday night, 10 Eastern, 9 Central. Dari, Lucci, Madison Shipman, who will be coming back from College Station. SEC softball tournament. It's on the SEC Network and streaming on the ESPN app. That's yeah. fun with that, don't you? 
it's it's a fun show. It's 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 a lot of fun. It's it's completely different than what you see out there, especially the the uh, SEC Now show with um, just a more laid back, relaxed atmosphere. We've got highlights. We've got bloopers. We've got uh, <laughs> everything that's going on in the week, and and we'll dissect. Uh, what's happening around the SEC in softball and baseball. Yeah, you guys do a great job. It reminds me uh, the old baseball tonight. It's just kind of that fun, just talking baseball, watching highlights, having a good time. But yep. I always enjoy watching you guys. Thank you. Thank you. 2-1 to Keenan. Outside ball three. Three and one to the Rebel third baseman. So what dance are you going to go with? It is a, it's a dance that the University of Georgia softball team posted on Twitter. And uh, I don't know why I was the one that was picked for it, uh, but they 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 challenged me. I think because they they think that I'm going to take on every challenge that's offered my way. Um, Sound, I, sounds like they were right. It, they are right. I'm, I'm Three a one. This is for ball four. That's the first walk of the game from Ethan Small, and he just doesn't do much of that. Only the 19th walk of the season. Ole Miss has first and second with one out, and Thomas Dillard coming to the plate. And interestingly, too, if you look at small stats, only the 19th walk, but that, I believe that's a 17th in league play. So two all year coming into conference play. The vast majority of these have come into league play, so it's kind of an interesting thing to keep an eye out for with one of the big bats for this Ole Miss lineup coming up in Thomas Dillard. David, you played in the stadium. Sits down in a hole. Is it difficult for the center fielder when a fog like this sets in? Yeah, and it's getting worse because the fog is setting. And, and so now you, you started with the fog up in the air. So the visibility on pop-ups were, were, uh, were going to be difficult. See the rings around the lights right there? That's, that's probably the, the hardest thing for an outfielder is those rings. They, they look small like lollipops on the screen. They're actually bigger out there when you stand out there, and, and it's the glare off of those lights. Uh, now that the fog has, has laid down lower, it's hard to see the pitcher pitching the ball. It's hard to get a read on the swing and the location of the pitch. You saw a really awkward swing by Diller there in that first pitch and late there on the fastball there right over the plate. You might as well be looking into the sun sometimes with, with some of these lights and these fogs. It's just really, really tough. Yep. No balls, two strikes to Thomas Dillard. Kessinger out at second base, Keenan at first. Kessinger had a one-out single off the third baseman Gilbert's glove. Keenan reaches on the walk. Thomas Dillard singled his first time up, and you can look, you can see how much he's choked up on the bat. Something that he does with two strikes. How many SEC teams can get to Omaha? How many can legitimately win it? I think you've got, uh, you have got Vandy. Ten. Yep, Vandy. Arkansas, that's that's the top two right there. Georgia, if, if they'll have an opportunity. They've got some injuries that they need to get guys back. Emerson Hancock, uh, Aaron Shunk is back. Um, definitely Mississippi State for sure. I think Ole Miss is an Omaha caliber team. Um, you're going to have Tennessee that's it's about as strong of a pitching staff as out there. Missouri they, they is going to get be, into the postseason, though. I, I think they're going to get in. I mean, they're, they're a team right now that uh, is is in. Uh, we keep talking about the record. If you get 16 wins in conference, it's a 100% chance you're going to go there. 15, going to be a little more difficult, but State did it last year at 15. 2-2 two, two to Dillard, another strikeout by Ethan Small, and that is a big one. Now two out in the bottom of the fourth inning, seventh strikeout of the game from Ethan Small. Just unable, this Ole Miss team has not been able to catch up to that upstairs fastball. Really good pitch there by Smalls. He went, he went off speed there, and then he went right back to the bread and butter with that elevated fastball. And at 90, I mean, it looks like a, a beach ball coming in. Next thing you know, it's by you. That spin rate. It's pretty impressive by Ethan Small. 
Cooper Johnson 0 for 1 coming to the plate looking for a two out base hit. That's how Mississippi State scored its only run, a two out double from Tanner Allen that scored Jordan Westberg. Cooper Johnson, the reigning SEC player of the week. So you got Vandy and Georgia out of the east, Arkansas, Ole Miss, Mississippi State out of the west. Anybody uh, are, you, are you talking about uh, Omaha potential teams? Or are you talking about teams getting into the postseason? I'm talking about Omaha. Omaha potential, yeah. I, I think Omaha potential is is Vandy, Arkansas right now. That's the two front runners. Mississippi State, Ole Miss, if if they continue the hot streak that they have right here, has has an opportunity. But um, you never know, man. I mean, I, I threw those teams, the other teams, Tennessee and Missouri. I, I think they're going to get into the regionals and then it's it's the hottest team at the end of the year it's not necessarily always the best club because the best club can hit a slump and um and and they'll tell you that in in baseball all the time is is it's the team that catches fire at the right spot and when you go into the postseason it's not necessarily where you're playing a two or three game series it's a one game at a time atmosphere and, and format so it's the team that's hot at that moment we saw army last year uh beat i think north carolina state maybe it, yeah. you just yeah. never know now army doesn't have the depth to go through it but there's always that team that ends up that mississippi state team that just absolutely catches fire and the confidence and momentum that they carry in there can bring them all the way to the finals yeah momentum's a huge part of it that this mississippi state team really was somewhat floundering there in the middle of the year and then all, won a series against this Ole Miss club and really caught fire and had a big hit by McNamee there down in the regional. Skelton showing that off, uh, that arm off again, trying to back pick Gray Kessinger at second base. And I, I can tell you this, I would never count out Mississippi State. And they, their backs were against the wall into the season in the super regionals in in the regionals when that guy is patrolling center field right there jake mangum the leader of that team can will the rest of that team put them on his back and carry them wherever they want to go and you've got a supporting cast this year that is a year older a year more mature physically and mentally one two up and in and the, the offense that Ole Miss possesses this year is, is fantastic. So in any one of those teams at the top, including these two teams out here, could take it all the way. You got Will Etheridge and really Doug Nikhazy who's turned out to be one of the better freshmen in, in the league and across the country, really. And they really leaned on both of those guys a big chunk of this year. No question they could carry them very deep into postseason play. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Runners on first and second. Ethan Small delivers, and it's high. So this takes you back to the situation where Mississippi State scored a run. You had Westberg on first with two out and a bases, or two out and a full count. And so that got the merry-go-round started. Tanner Allen delivered with the RBI double. Same situation here. Kessinger and Keenan will be on the move with the pitch. And Cooper Johnson deliver for the Rebels in the bottom of the fourth. He cannot, but Ethan Small delivers. Eighth strikeout of the ball game. His third of the inning. He struck out six of the last eight batters that he has faced. He's graduating tomorrow. Walking cap, gown, pomp and circumstance. You got Ruby there to watch it. I love it. Yep. Good Thanks to see for you, having me. Man. Thanks for having me. Congratulations. Yep. Howdy toddy. Congratulations. Thank you very One much. One to nothing. State leads it. Bulldogs leading it one to nothing over Ole Miss as we go to the fifth inning. Four hits for Mississippi State, three so far for Ole Miss. We almost had a couple of base runners in the fourth inning. One out single from Greg Kessinger, a walk to Tyler Keenan. But back to back strikeouts from Ethan Small. He's got Eight strikeouts in the game. The SEC strikeout leader is adding to his total tonight. Will Etheridge. There's the first pitch to the eight hole hitter Gunner Halter.
Etheridge has got three strikeouts in the game. He has walked one. Wake up, Mr. Umpire. <laughs> no, it's late. Even with a mask, it doesn't necessarily hurt, but it jars you. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> yeah, but it's about as good as having a cup of coffee there just to get you, get you back in the game real quick. Halter, Gilbert, then top of the lineup, Mangum for Mississippi State. And the top of the fifth inning leading 1-0. Interesting, Halter, junior college transfer, and drafted twice in the 22nd round in 2017 and 26 and 2018. Would imagine there'll be some teams that'll be knocking on the door again. Halter had a big weekend against Georgia. He had two multi-hit games. And the sweep against Georgia. Mississippi State won that series, or won all three of those games, 19 to three, nine to three, and then six to five in the series finale. Ground ball, base hit left side. Split the difference between Keenan and Kessinger. At third and short, and Mississippi State has the leadoff man on to start the fifth. Yeah, just good job there. Get that fastball. He's trying to get in on his hands there, but unable to do so. You see Halter pull his hands inside the ball and able to just get the barrel on and drive it through the hole. That's what seems a lot different about this Mississippi State lineup. They're just not dependent on two or three guys like they were a year ago. Top to bottom, they can do a lot of damage. Marshall Gilbert walked his first time up, bunts it. And it's punted well. Graham fields it, throws to Bench, covering it first. Sacrifice there for Marshall Gilbert. One away, and Halter in scoring position with Mangum coming to the plate for the third time tonight. A good execution there. and You see Bench getting over and fielding his position as that bunt was right there in between Etheridge and, and Graham. Good, uh, good baseball all the way around right there. Side for ball one. Flew out to left his first time up. Grounded into a double play in the third inning. First time this year that Mangum has grounded into a double play. First time period since June 1st of last season. Hits this one on the ground to bench and is retired for the second out of the inning. Halter moves to third. They are two down for Jordan Westberg, who's two for two. Justin Bench called into duty first start of the season, and he's played well at second base tonight. Yeah, that felt like a big out there, one of those momentum plays potentially as Westberg has a chance to keep the momentum going, but Small's able to get out some big strikeouts there, and then States has their, their big guy up with a runner on, and after they will get uh, get their big guy out with a chance to get out of the inning now. Missed the spot, but didn't miss the plate by much on that one. Voicing their displeasure. Two balls and a strike to Jordan Westberg. A couple of singles has scored Mississippi State's only run tonight. Came around on Tanner Allen's two out RBI double in the third inning. 
three and one. Richard Cross, Matt McLaughlin with you from Swayze Field. Game one of a three-game series between Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Tied for second in the SEC West, both 15 and nine. Coming into this weekend series. 3-1 pitch to Westburg. All four, second walk of the game by Will Etheridge. Second walk and really missing, Etheridge misses spots for the majority of that at bat, especially the last four. As you see Cooper set up outside, missing inside. Now Coach Bianco going to have a chat with his ace. Pitch count starting to climb for both of the starters in this game. You see 73 pitches so far for Will Etheridge. For Mississippi State, Ethan Small has thrown 70 pitches through four innings. Neither coach thinking about making a change right now. It's got a tarp over the mound in both bullpens. Sixth inning in Tuscaloosa, Texas A&M leading 3-2 over Alabama. Big, important series this weekend for the Aggies. Florida beat Tennessee 10-9. Came from behind with four runs in the seventh inning and two runs in the eighth inning. They were down 9-3 going into the bottom of the seventh. Came back and won it. Georgia beats Auburn 11-2. South Carolina 5-4 over Kentucky. And Arkansas has taken the first two at home from LSU. He was tight early. Razorbacks pull away late with an 11 to 6 win. Vanderbilt wins again 5 to 2 tonight over Missouri. It's just going to be hard to catch Vanderbilt or Arkansas. Yeah, I was just I was just thinking Manny just really a machine this year. They got both the the offense and the, the defense and the pitching the full full package this year. Seems like the last few years they've kind of had one or the other mostly pitching, but this year with J.J. Bladé, they've really just kind of run away with it in a lot of ways. That's a tough loss tonight for Tennessee. They're now 10 and 15 with five games remaining in league play. All in a strike here to Tanner Allen. Just like last inning, Ole Miss was unable to capitalize in a big spot. Feels like that moment again here for Mississippi State. Each team could really capture momentum here with this at bat. Two and one. Runners at the corners for Mississippi State. Gunnar Halter single to start the inning, got to second on the sacrifice bunt for Marshall Gilbert. Mangum's ground out moved him to third, and then a two-out walk for Jordan Westberg. Now a 2-1 pitch to Tanner Allen, fouls it away. Fog continues to not only set in, but get a little bit thicker over Swayze Field. For most of the day, the concern was, is the rain going to stop? Will you be able to play? I don't know that anybody really thought about the fact that once you started, even if it wasn't raining, you might have something else to worry about. Fog was not in the forecast from what I was, uh, when I was tracking it. Two balls and two strikes to Tanner Allen. Etheridge popped up, out of play. I'll be honest, I'm not sure that what you see on your screen quite does justice to how thick the fog has gotten. You heard David DeLucci mention it, SEC tournament a year ago. Had a game that was postponed to the next day to be finished the next morning because of a fog delay. It runs outside for ball three, full count. The problem, if the fog were really to set in and got to the point where you decided it wasn't playable anymore tonight, the forecast for tomorrow is terrible. Yeah, you, they really needed to get this one in tonight just so they could give themselves an out on Sunday if they needed, if they really needed it, because tomorrow does look tough. 
Up the middle, that's a base hit, and that scores a run. Tanner Allen with an RBI single. He has driven in both of Mississippi State's runs in this ball game, and the Bulldogs are ahead now 2 to nothing. Yeah, just another really good at bat. Right, Allen just really grinded out those last two at bats, and he was able to get something up in the zone. He put the barrel on it. Really good night going for Allen, a 2 nothing lead. And, you know, at this moment where Etheridge really has to bear down, 2 nothing, not insurmountable, but you can let innings get away if you don't focus. Ole Miss is sending Houston Roth down to the bullpen. It'll take a minute before he can begin tossing. They've got to pull back the tarp and squared away and ready to go. Elijah McNamee 0 for 2, swings and misses there. Yeah, just a touch on the fog game. I mean, you can you can make out Josh Hall's body out here from the booth, but I mean, he's, he's, it's tough to see, even see the outfielders uh, right now from the booth. Yeah, don't ask me to tell you if he's got sunglasses <laughs> right. on his hat. A one pitch just off the corner of the plate for ball one. Back on February 29th, 2008, against Indiana State, you had a game that was suspended for fog. I don't remember that game specifically, but uh, Lance Lynn was pitching that night. David Dillard, who has been around for a while, seen a bunch of baseball here, says that he remembers that game. It was a Friday night game. They were actually able to resume that game. This one's popped up. I have no I idea where, but Justin Bench does. He makes the catch, and that ends the inning. Mississippi State adds to its lead. Another RBI single for Tanner Allen. It's two to nothing. Saturday at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. It's the final day of the SEC Outdoor Track and Field Championship at Arkansas John McDonald Field in Fayetteville. All the best runners, jumpers, and throwers battle in the finals for individual titles and the team title. The Gators are the defending men's and women's champs. It's right here on the SEC Network, streaming live on the ESPN app. The SEC Track and Field Championships run three days, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Cole Zabowski into short right field with the shift on. That is why you play the shift. I actually had a conversation with Chris Lamonis earlier this year about it. And he said, you know, there are times where it just frustrates the heck out of you. The thing with shift, that, that if, if, if you're going to shift on left-handed hitters, that's your philosophy. You got to do it every time. You got to realize that sometimes you're going to get burnt. Sometimes they're going to go the opposite way. But if you just kind of do it here and there, then the percentages can bite you on both ends. That's right. And you see Graham right there, square around the bunt, thinking if he drops one down the third baseline, it's an, he's walking into first base. So the shift can give it and take it away all at the same time. But as you said, to do it consistently is the only way that you're able to really capitalize on it. Graham again shows bunt, takes ball two as it bounces in. So for Cole Zabowski, that was his 189th at bat of the year. In the first 188, that would have been a hit. I, I don't think anybody has shifted that severely on him all year. You hear the reaction. This was the reaction. And thought it was up. Fouled out of play. Third base side. And now the count goes to two and two. Yeah, I mean, he put the barrel on it, put it right in the hole. Like you said, that's a base hit. 10, 15 years ago, it's a base hit 100 out of 100 times. But baseball's changed in so many ways. You get launch angles, spin rates, shifts. Evolution seems to continue. 2-2 to Graham. That ball is just fouled down the third baseline. It was right over the top of the third base bag. 
but kicked into the air and came down in foul ground. Tyler Simpson, the third base umpire, right on top of it. Ooh, that was close. Ooh, I, from our angle, I mean, it looked like it may have popped over the bag. Obviously, the umpire has a great, great look down the line, but that's as close as it gets right there. Tyler Simpson, the third base umpire. Kevin Graham swings and misses. Ground down on a strikeout to start the inning. Yeah, just another fastball there by, by Small. And again, just that's his game. He knows exactly what he's going to do. These almost hitters know what he's going to do, and it's just unable to catch up to it. Nine strikeouts through four and two thirds. So nine of 13 outs in the ball game for Ethan Small have been via the strikeout. Justin Bench makes strike one. I think the strike zone tonight from DeBrower, the home plate umpire, has been that bad. But the fans at Swayze Field have become increasingly irritated with the home plate umpire. Probably strong. has something to do with the scoreboard also. I was say, they're just strong in their convictions. I mean, there's uh, there's no doubt. That there's no different than any ballpark. There's a lot of umpires across the country and a lot of baseball parks. But, uh, but yeah, Small's been he's, – he's been in the zone most of the day, and um, I think he, the home plate umpires had a pretty good zone most of the night. I, I will say from – I would think the hitter's perspective, when a pitcher's living at the bottom of the zone and he's getting that pitch at the very bottom of the strike zone that might be borderline low, and then you turn around and you give a strike at or just above the belt, as a hitter you want to be, okay, yeah. okay which is it? Yeah. Is it a low strike zone or is it a high strike zone? E Ethan Small has kind of lived at the bottom of that strike zone. Yeah, and again, when you're down in the zone, even if that ball is above the belt, which may be a strike in the umpire's mind, it does, for the hitter, it seems like it's much further up. Bench able to hold up. And the amount of times that Small changes up his delivery is, is pretty remarkable. In one at bat, you could see different pitch times to the plate four or five different times. Strike counts tonight for Small, one in the first, one in the second, three in the third, three in the fourth, one so far here in the fifth. Can add one more. That is strikeout number 10 in the ball game, the ninth 10 strikeout game of this season for Ethan Small. Two to nothing. Mississippi State leads it as we go to the sixth. Welcome you back to Swayze Field, top of the sixth inning. Two to nothing, Mississippi State leading it. Game management officials have been out in between this half inning talking to a couple of the umpires. Scott Klein is the crew chief. He's the second base umpire tonight. And he has actually gone to the headset over on the third base side where normally you would put on for a review. That is the connection directly to Birmingham and the officials at the SEC office and maybe looking for a little bit of help on the decision of do we keep going or not? What are the options here? I thought it was interesting. Scott Klein and the first base umpire, Christopher Griffith, were talking with the game management person from Ole Miss and Thomas Dillard stopped by to kind of join in the conversation on his way to left field. He jogged on out to left. Obviously, we're talking about a pretty heavy fog that has settled in on top of Swayze Field, Oxford University Stadium. It's gotten progressively thicker as the game has gone along. Chris Lamonis is being called out of the Mississippi State dugout. Mike Bianco will come out of the Ole Miss dugout as well. They're going to talk with Scott Klein. And it's going to be interesting to see how this decision goes. they got to be talking about whether they might be looking for direction on his official game or not, too. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm sure Coach B would be very much opposed to that. But here in the, in the top of the six now, 
Well, you, when, when you've got the remainder of the weekend yeah. to play, it certainly wouldn't become an official game at this point. You would look at a scenario where you would have to resume it in the same way that if rain set in and you couldn't continue to play tonight, you'd resume it when you're able to. Looks like for now, though, we are going to continue playing. I wish we had like a drone that had a microphone <laughs> on it. We could have kind of dropped right down in and listened in. How, we talked about the game changing the last half inning. I've never seen an umpire go, <laughs> go to the, to a headset for uh, clarification on a fog delay. So, again, that's what makes baseball so fun. You never know what you're going to see at the ballpark on any given day. Top of the sixth inning, Justin Foscue leading off for Mississippi State. He lines it to left. Dillard comes in on the run and makes the catch. That one never got above the fog line, so Dillard was <laughs> – Able to get a good read on it. We were able to see that one up here in the booth, but uh, a good swing there by Foscue and really just tattooed that one out there and Diller's able to run it down. First out in the sixth for Will Etheridge. Two nothing game. Mississippi State leading. Over Ole Miss. Rowdy Jordan looking for his first hit of the night. Takes a strike. Big half inning here for Etheridge. Pitch count creeping up a little bit. Really trying to keep his guys in the ball game right now. One and two, Etheridge gets a little bit of an extension of home plate there. Three strikeouts, two walks, a couple of earned runs allowed. Houston Roth got loose earlier, or started getting loose earlier for Ole Miss. There's a called strike three. Rowdy Jordan goes away looking. Well, it was... Ole Miss fans that weren't super fired up about the strike zone. Mississippi State fans. Well, that's a good pitch right there. If, I can understand if you're Rowdy Jordan, that ball's at the knee there, but uh, that's a really good two-strike pitch by Etheridge. He gets the call there as uh, much to the pleasure of the crowd, that's for sure. Saw the tarp on the bullpen. That's for Mississippi State, and that may be a little disappointing. I think Ole Miss would like to see somebody not named Ethan Small throw a baseball in this game. Yeah, no question. A couple, two weeks ago here in Oxford, they were able to get into the bullpen of Texas A&M, and that's really couldn't do a whole lot with Doc Saxis or Lacey, and they were able to get after that A&M pin, and certainly important for this lineup to try and get Small out of the game. Dustin Skelton, roller to Kevin Graham. Etheridge covering. It's a 1-2-3, top of the sixth inning. Exactly what Will Etheridge needed. He said, Houston Roth, hang on for a little while. I'm, I'm good for now. Two to nothing. State leads it. Ethan Small has been as good as advertised on this Friday night in Oxford. Ten strikeouts and in five innings of work. And he's mixed it up. He's worked at the bottom of the zone. He's elevated the fastball, but it has been, as you thought it would be coming in, Matt, predominantly fastballs. That's what he does. That's right. That's absolutely what he does, and it looks like uh, we're headed off the field here. But uh, so far, Small's had a tremendous night. Might be the first fog delay I've ever been a part of, but uh, that's what it looks like where we're headed. So they talked about this happening prior to the last half inning. Scott Klein, again the crew chief, has called Mississippi State off the field. We were getting set for the bottom of the sixth. Mississippi State leading two to nothing. And it looks like we are headed for, at best, a fog delay. Game was two hours late getting started. Originally scheduled for 6.30, we ended up with an 8.30 first pitch. We're about two hours into the ballgame. The game's actually had pretty good pace to it. And that is Coach Bianco in the dugout, if you can see through the fog. Just get an idea of what we're uh, what they're dealing with there. Haven't it, got official word yet on. 
If this game resumes tonight or is completed tonight, we will bring it to you here on the SEC Network Plus and streaming on the ESPN app. If I'm Chris Lamonis, I'm frustrated right now because I got my guy on the mound and his pitch count is still in pretty decent shape. And he's got 10 strikeouts and he's only given up three hits, has not allowed a run. And we've just been told by Glenn Waddell, the public address announcer in the stadium, that there is a 30 minute delay. And I guess at that point they will reassess whether or not the game can continue. So the question kind of becomes with with Ethan Small whether or not, well, I guess the question becomes how long can you hold him out of the game? He's just a little bit north of 80 pitches in this game. 30 minutes, not too bad. You can keep your arm loose. Anything beyond that at that pitch count, you're you're risking the, the risk isn't his sharpness or anything. You can risk injury, and you don't want to do that to a top 50 draft prospect for sure. Well, on a top 50 draft prospect who may be pitching his way into the first round. Right. Ethan Small, a guy that at Mississippi State in 2016, numbers weren't very good. He was 1-0, and but had a 13 ERA. Had an issue with his elbow and... Ended up having Tommy John surgery, missed the entire 2017 season. Came back last year, went 5 and 4 in 18 starts with 122 strikeouts. This season, Ethan Small has continued to progress. He's now 6 and 1, or was 6 and 1 coming into this ballgame, 5 and 1 on the year, and he's up to 132 strikeouts for the season. So we are in a half an hour fog delay with Mississippi State leading two to nothing. Welcome back to slightly less foggy Oxford, Mississippi, as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Mississippi State leading two to nothing over Ole Miss. We have been in a fog delay for almost half an hour. This was a view from the center field camera when the game was called. They called for a 30 minute delay because of the fog. And that's what you're looking at now. So obviously it has gotten significantly better. We've gotten very little communication from the game operations people or the umpires, so we're just kind of going with what we are being told at this point, and we're being told that we're about to resume play. We are not, however, going to resume play with Ethan Small on the mound. New pitcher in the game for Mississippi State is Jared Liebelt. He is a six foot, 169 pound senior from Aurora, Illinois. And Lee Belt's been good this year. This is his 24th outing of the season. He's 1-0 with a 2.72 ERA. But I suppose from an Ole Miss perspective, anybody not named Ethan Small at this point is a good thing. No question. I mean, that advantage Ole Miss on the, after this fog delay, I mean, there's absolutely no question. Ethan Small was cruising, and he was able to get out of a really one big jam. But you got to feel good if you're this Ole Miss lineup and getting to see anybody else and then a right-hander nonetheless. So Jared Liebelt, 1-0, 24th appearance of the year, 25 strikeouts, just six walks this season. Appeared in 12 games a year ago. So it's been a much bigger workload this season. All of the outings from Jared Liebelt, though, have been in relief. Josh Hall, the nine-hole hitter, batting from the left side, will lead off here in the bottom of the sixth inning after a half an hour fog delay, and he fouls back the first pitch that he sees. Richard Cross, Matt McLaughlin with you from Swayze Field in Oxford. Game one of a three-game series. Top 15 matchup. Start time of this game was delayed two hours because of rain, and we have had 30-minute fog delay as well. There is a strike to Josh Hall. Home plate umpire went with a little wardrobe change as well. He's 
Going from long sleeves to the light blue shirt. Yeah, we'll see Lebo here dropping for that three-quarter arm slot. Be really, really tough for right-handers as that ball's coming in from behind him. All spoils a pitch there. Ethan Small was absolutely fantastic tonight for Mississippi State. Five innings, three hits, ten strikeouts, and one walk. O2 coming to Josh Hall. Strike three called. He goes away looking on a fastball right at the knees. Bottom of the strike zone. Good start for Jared Liebelt. Yeah, that ball really, you see the, the arm side run there in Liebelt. That ball started right at Josh Hall's knees. It ends up pretty much breaking right over the plate. Little down, I think, from Hall's perspective, but really good pitch there by Liebelt. Now top of the order, Anthony Servidio takes away for ball one. Ethan Small tonight could be the winner. He cannot be the loser. Five innings, ten strikeouts. Gave up a hit in the first, a hit in the second, and a hit in the fourth. Did not allow a run to score. Strike to Servidio. Yeah, we'll see what this Ole Miss lineup does. It feels like a new life for them. We'll see if they're able to capitalize here, maybe get some momentum. It's a tough pitch right there. Strike two to Servideo behind in the count, one and two. So Mississippi State goes to its bullpen, and Jared Liebelt, Houston Roth getting loose in the Ole Miss bullpen. Got to believe that Will Etheridge's night is also done. Kind of cruised his way through the sixth inning after laboring a bit in the fifth. Ball popped up, shallow right field. Foscu, the second baseman, going out, but it's McNamee, the right fielder, that makes the catch for the second out of the inning. Yeah, Lee Bell went, he's been working the insides for the first two hitters that have come up for Ole Miss been on the left-handed side. He's just worked them in. Been un unable to get the barrel to the bat. Two quick outs here in the sixth. With Kessinger coming to the plate. The one thing a delay like that does that has implication for the rest of the weekend is you know Mississippi State's got to go straight to the bullpen. No matter you know no matter the outcome of this game, they're going to have to use arms that they may not have to use had Small been able to remain in there. So it'll be interesting to see how the weekend plays out. And the expectation was that Lee Belt would likely be the first arm out of the bullpen tonight, but it might have been an inning later. Round ball, base hit through the left side for Dre Kessinger. Two out single, second hit of the game for the Rebel shortstop. And that's right in Dre Kessinger's wheelhouse right there. He's looking for something middle in that he's able to extend his hands on. He smashes one through the hole there. Again, we talked about trying to catch momentum now with Small out of the game. You got one of your big bats coming up with two outs. Tyler Keenan coming to the plate. Keenan singled in the first, walked in the fourth. He's been on base twice, but was cut down trying to turn that single in the first inning into a double. He takes a first pitch strike. Mangum did a good job running it down in the outfield, cut it off in the gap, made a good throw to Westberg, who made the relay to second base, and they got Tyler Keenan trying to slide head first into the second base bag, and that ended the first inning. Pitch in the dirt, and now caught Greg up. Kessinger's caught in a rundown. Ole Miss loses its third base runner of the ball game. You've got Keenan, who was caught in the first inning, trying to turn a single into a double. A caught stealing of Dillard in the second inning, and now Kessinger is erased. Will Etheridge Knight 
is done for Ole Miss. Able to work out of trouble a couple of times. He gave up single runs in the third and the fifth. This was in the third inning. Tanner Allen hits a rocket to right field over Anthony Servideo to score Jordan Westberg. We go to the fifth inning again. Tanner Allen at the plate, an RBI single up the middle. Scored Gunner Halter. Those are the two runs in the ball game for Mississippi State. And Ethan Small doing work on the mound tonight. Ten strikeouts. He faced 17 Ole Miss hitters. Got ten strikeouts. Allowed one walk. Did not give up a run. Second consecutive outing for Ethan Small, in which he is not allowed a run. So there's your game summary. Big night for Tanner Allen at the plate. He's three for three with two runs batted in for Mississippi State. Both starters are out of the game. Jake Mangum does not have a hit in the game. New pitcher for Ole Miss is Houston Roth. Roth finished off Ole Miss's win against LSU on Sunday. The junior from here in Oxford, 6'3", 220 pounds, is making his 15th appearance of the year. He's got three starts on the season, 33 strikeouts, 11 walks. Out on an injury early in the season. It will work here in the top of the seventh, trying to keep Mississippi State where they are, leading 2 to nothing over Ole Miss. 8, 9, and 1 for the Bulldogs in the top of the seventh. Gunnar Halter, Marshall Gilbert, and then Jake Mangum. Good fastball there by Roth. You'll see a lot of fastballs from him. He goes to the breaking ball as well, but Roth's game has worked off of that fastball. For him to be effective, he'll need to work off of that and hit his spots. Works outside, then comes inside and gets ahead of the count. Ball and two strikes to Gunnar Halter. Halter struck out swinging back in the second inning, singled and scored in the fifth. Just off the plate, count evens at two and two. Good miss there by Roth. That ball was right on the outside black. Sometimes you'll get that call, sometimes you don't, but that's where you want to miss in a 1 2 count. Down and in on the 2 2. Second meeting of the year between Ole Miss and Mississippi State. Head of the Governor's Cup in Pearl. That was an 8 to 1 win for the Bulldogs on April 23rd. Swing and a miss for a strikeout. Gunnar Halter goes down swinging. Houston Roth records first strikeout coming into the game. He just went right after him with fastballs. I think the first pitch was a breaking ball, and after that, just a bunch of fastballs in a row. He's able to get it by him there up in the zone. When you miss, when you can nibble on the outside like that, hitters are a little bit more amped up to hit, so anytime you can elevate it like that, you put yourself in position to get a big strikeout. Marshall Gilbert does not have an official at bat in this game. Walked in the third inning, had a sacrifice bunt in the fifth. Two and zero. Oh. Won't be the first time. This Mississippi State lineup seen Roth as the Governor's Cup. He threw a couple innings, gave up a run, had three strikeouts. So they know what they're going to get out of the big right-hander. This ball pretty well hit to center. Josh Hall on the run, gets back to the warning track and makes the catch a couple of steps shy of the wall. That ball was hit really well by Marshall Gilbert. Yeah, the ball was crushed, and Hall made it look <laughs> made it look really easy. When you have a lead speed like that, you can run some balls down and uh, make them look routine. But nothing routine about that one. Is uh, two quick outs here for Roth with Mangle coming up. 
Right. Top of the lineup, quiet night by Jake Mangum's standards. Fly out in the first. Rounded into his first double play of the season in the third. He is not 0 for any more, though, as he rifles that one down into the right field corner. Servideo will send it back in. Another double for Jake Mangum. That is his 19th double of the year. Came into the game tied for third in the SEC with 18 doubles. Yeah, you cannot make those mistakes to really good hitters. That ball was just up, belt high. Mangum punishes it in the right field corner. And again, we talk about these moments, momentum moments. Two outs here, runner at second. Roth will need to bear down here and get the Rebels back to the box. Well, the next two guys have been tough to deal with tonight. Jordan Westberg and Tanner Allen have been on base six times in six at bats. Jake Mangum now three away from tying Travis Chapman for the career doubles mark at Mississippi State. Jake Mangum is either on or leading basically every chart that you would look at for chasing records. Not home runs, he's not a home run hitter. Doubles, triples, batting average, hits, on base percentage, he's done it all. That was blocked nicely by Cooper Johnson, 2-0 and to Jordan Westberg. Look at this. <laughs> First in hits, batting average, not bad. At bats, runs, doubles, triples, totals bases, stolen bases, tied for fourth there. Played in now 245 games, all of those numbers coming into tonight. Now 68 career doubles. The 2-0, check swing, strike one on the appeal. Westberg, two singles and a walk. He scored a run tonight. That was back in the third inning. And the guy that follows him, Tanner Allen, three for three with two singles, a double, and two runs driven in. This would be a big out for Houston Roth. Count evens at two and two after the foul off. And Roth missed pretty badly on the first two pitches. Comes back to throw two really good ones, ties him up for a check swing strike, and then that breaking ball is really good there. See where Roth goes here to try to get himself out of the inning. Mangum at second, Westberg at the plate, the pitch. Full count coming. Just above the belt with the fastball. Strike three called. Jordan Westberg that time could not pull the trigger. It was a fastball out over the heart of the plate. Couple of strikeouts here in the seventh for Houston Roth. Pretty good pitch to hit there. Two to nothing. Time to stretch at Swayze. Mississippi State leading two to nothing. That's Jim Ellis. He's in his 41st year as the radio play-by-play -play voice of Mississippi State baseball. And today is his birthday. So happy birthday, Jim. Super guy. Been fun to get to know Jim through the years. Tyler Keenan, it's a two hopper to second. Well, he hit it on a line. That was handled with ease by Foscu, and there's quickly one out here in the seventh inning. Yeah, big pit, one pitch out there. The Libra is going to try and get as deep as he can into this game to, to keep the bullpen fresh for the rest of the weekend as we go back to the. <laughs> The shift here. So Mississippi State with pretty dramatic shift against Thomas Dillard. They have benefited once already tonight from this defensive alignment. 
Took a hit away from Cole Zabowski. Back in the fifth inning. Ole Miss has struggled with Mississippi State pitching this year. They scored a single run in the third inning of the Governor's Cup. Took a 1-0 lead at that point. Since then, it has been all zeros. Last six innings of the game in Pearl, first six innings of the game tonight. So 12 and a third for Ole Miss against Mississippi State. I guess 12 and two-thirds without a run scored. Thomas Diller, chopper, right side, backhanded by Allen. He'll step on the bag, and there are quickly two down in the seventh. Yeah, just another ball down in the zone. Diller's unable to get on top of or get uh, get the barrel down to it in time. He said two quick outs. That's exactly what Coach Lonis wants here for his reliever. So we shift back the other way now. They'll play Cooper Johnson to pull the other way. Big hole on the right side of the infield. Cooper Johnson 0 for 2 with a fly out and a strikeout. He chops it to second. Big hop for Foskey. Well, hey, behind the bag, and Ole Miss goes quickly in the bottom of the seventh inning with three straight ground outs. Seven complete, two to nothing. Bulldogs with the lead. Well, tonight, Florida got game one against Tennessee. Tomorrow, game two coming your way on the SEC Network, three Eastern. Central. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Florida with the win. Got to 10 and 15 in league play. Tennessee falls to 10 and 15. You see baseball on the SEC Network. This is the only game still going. Arkansas has taken the first two of the series against LSU. Razorbacks are now 18 and 7. LSU with the loss falls to 14 and 11. Winner of this game tonight will be in solo second place in the West. Yeah, we'll see how Roth attacks Allen. He's been all over the baseball tonight. Just really set, really good at bats all night, really competitive at bats, and he's able to find himself a pitch up in the zone. He's hammered three of them. And he's used the entire ballpark. Went the opposite way through the left side in the first inning. Hit a rocket to right center in the third inning, and then humpback line drive through the <laughs> middle of the infield in the fifth inning. Yeah, I, I like his swing a lot. It's got He's got a lot of hand action with, with this swing, which makes it tough for you for you to get one by him. And we've seen several of those emergency cuts that we were talking about earlier where he's able to just fight him off. One, two. Richard Cross, Matt McLaughlin with you from Oxford game one. And the Bulldogs and the Rebels. Mississippi State in the driver's seat right now. Allen fouls it off to stay alive. Single runs in the third and the fifth inning. In that swing right there was a good pitch by Roth, and Allen just spoils it. And that's what he's done all night long, and he's been able to get that next pitch where he's been able to drive. We'll see if Roth goes back down with the breaking ball here. 2-2 pitch, lifted to right. Servideo just kind of froze. Was able to find it, made a couple of steps back, and makes the catch for the first out here in the eighth inning. To get Westberg striking out to end the seventh and Allen to fly out to start the eighth, big sequence. Yeah, no question. And that, that was still a great at bat by Allen. Obviously, he crushed that ball to right field, and that's exactly, that might as well have been on repeat, watching all of those at bats. He's seeing the ball really well. Fog or no fog, he's been swinging it well tonight. Fog has certainly thinned out a little bit. You've still got kind of a canopy of fog above the playing surface, but at field level. You can actually see, most importantly. Yeah. 
the, the ball that Tanner Allen hit, and, and it didn't have a ton of elevation, I don't think we would have seen until it was caught by Servideo oh, yeah. before the fog delay earlier. The 1-1. One, one. Round ball. Kessinger behind the bag. Two down. Well, this is giving itself a chance in this ball game. Two to nothing. It's six outs to work with offensively. Certainly manageable. Rebels just haven't been able to string together anything against either the starter, Ethan Small, or Jared Liebelt in the last two innings out of the bullpen. Yeah, they had one shot with the big guys up, and Small was able to get out of it. Other than that, he's been, he pretty much cruised the rest, rest of the way and rightfully deserves a lot of praise. But Etheridge did a really great job of keeping the Rebels in the game, too, uh, as is Roth done with uh, now working his second inning. Justin Foscu 0 for 3. Pop out, strike out, line out. Hasn't been that long ago, but Foscu, first Mississippi State player with double-digit home runs since Brent Rooker had the 23 home runs two seasons ago. But he pops out there and is 0 for 4, and Ole Miss will go to the bottom of the eighth inning, trailing 2 to nothing. This coming Tuesday, it's the SEC tournament in Hoover, Vanderbilt. Currently in line for the number one overall seed, Arkansas. Just a game back overall. The winner of the East and the winner of the West get the number one and number two seeds overall. Top four teams earn first round buys in the SEC tournament. So you do not have to play an elimination game on Tuesday. Those top four teams are guaranteed to be part of the double elimination tournament that starts on Wednesday. We'll have eight teams play for the other four spots on Tuesday. Five versus 12 and so on. Cole Zabowski shift on once again. And Zabowski takes that pitch inside for ball one. Yeah, we'll see if Ole Miss can make an adjustment. The last two innings against Lieber have not been very competitive at bats here. He gets, he gets some really good sink to the ball, and I think that's what's been messing with the left-handed hitters for Ole Miss as well. Anytime you get that sink action, you're going three-quarter three -quarter guy, you got to see the ball up. Make sure you see it up or that ball is just going to end up down in the zone. You've seen them roll over on several ground balls already. Chopper up the middle, off the glove this time of the second baseman, Marshall Gilbert. When I say the second baseman, I actually mean the third baseman, Marshall Gilbert, who was played over in the second base slot with the shift on. So lead off base runner for Ole Miss. Big, big leadoff base runner for the Rebels here. See, they, they've really run themselves out of some innings. Uh, chances have been few and far between, but when they've had guys on, they've made some some tough mistakes there on the base path that really run themselves out. We'll see if Graham can't uh, get one up, see if he can't find a gap. He was, had a really good weekend last weekend at LSU. Kevin Graham 0 for 2 tonight with two strikeouts swinging, both off of Ethan Small. He lines this one the opposite way, a base hit. First pitch that Graham saw, sends it to left field. His first hit of the game, and Ole Miss has first and second with nobody out here in the bottom of the eighth. Exactly what I was talking about earlier. Graham sees that ball up in the zone, and he stays on it, puts the barrel on it, drives it the other way. Really, really big moment situation here. I think we'll have Jacob Adams coming to the plate for, the, for Ole Miss Rebels here. So Mike Bianco is taking an offensive timeout. Ball's 
runs, base coaches and the base runners over. Jacob Adams will replace Justin Finch at second base and will hit here in the eight hole. Well, maybe <laughs> Finch should back in there after Adams started walking to the plate. Might be one of those situations if you're going to lay one down, you decide which one of those guys is a better bunter. But interesting uh, huddle we got going here. Bench is going to stay in there. Okay, so change of plans. It will be Justin Bench. Adams may stay in and pinch it for Josh Hall in the on deck circle. Jacob Adams is swinging a bat. He was definitely walking up to, like he was walking to the plate though, and then bench came out of nowhere, out of the dugout. So Justin Bench at the plate, runners on first and second with nobody out. Bottom of the eighth inning, Mississippi State leading two to nothing. Bench squares to bunt, and he takes strike one. That pitch was low. I think that's a good take by Bench. Ball looked down, and it's a tough one to get to. And anytime you reach to, for a bunt like that, you end up, there's a good chance you could pop it up. Bench squares again and bunts it foul, and now it's 0 and 2. Seen a couple of times this year. I think of particularly with Anthony Servideo at the plate where they've left the bunt on with two strikes, and he's been able to get it down, get it to execute. This is only the seventh game that Justin Bench has played in all year, and the first since March the 5th. Had a broken finger in a game against Little Rock. Squares to bunt. Pitch is outside for ball one. Yeah, the bunt was on there. State's still playing bunt. We'll see with uh, see if they keep it on here. Every now and again, you'll see a team go to a slash and let show bunt and see if they can't get the defense to commit. And he pulls it back and tries to slap one through the hole. Ole Miss trying to get runners into scoring position. Bench squares. He bunts it foul first base side. That is a strikeout. That's a frustrating at bat for Justin Bench for the first out of the inning. Yeah, it's just a risky run uh, with a guy like Lieber on the mound who's got sync to his ball. It just makes it a little bit tougher to bunt. Really need to execute in that situation. You'd really like to see Bench get that bat out in front of the plate there. It almost looks like he was a little bit defensive there. And sometimes with two strikes, you can change your mentality a little bit when you're trying to lay one down. So now Ole Miss will have to string together a couple of hits to try and tie the game. Trailing two to nothing. Get back-to-back -back singles to start the inning. Elect to try and bunt to move those guys over. Not successful with the bunt. And so you're looking at the exact same situation, but now with one out. And the nine-hole hitter, but Jacob Adams pinch hitting for Josh Hall. Adams hits a ground ball to second, chance for two, four, six, three, double play. So from first and second with nobody out, a bunt strikeout, and a ground ball double play to get out of the inning for Mississippi State. One hopper from Adams to second, an easy turn in the middle for Foscue and Westberg, and we will go to the ninth. Bulldogs leading it two to nothing. Back for the ninth inning. Mississippi State with a 2-0 lead. Ole Miss has made a couple of defensive changes. Anthony Servideo has gone from right field to center field. And Carl Gendel has entered the game and is now in right field. So Gendel would be in the nine hole in the lineup. 
for Jacob Adams, who just pitched, pinch hit for Josh Hall. Rowdy Jordan leading off for Mississippi State, then Dustin Skelton and Gunnar Halter. Those are the three that are scheduled to hit for the Bulldogs here at the top of the ninth to start things off. Popped up left side. Kessinger may have the best angle. He had to slide. I don't know if he lost it or just saw the tarp coming up. That's just a foul ball strike for Rowdy Jordan. Yeah, that's a tough play with a tough sky still, that, although the fog's cleared up at field level. Still pretty vicious up there. I'm not sure, like you said, if he lost it or not, but as you get close to the tarp of the wall, you really need to get down just to be safe. So good job by Grady trying to get there, just wasn't able to make the play. Ball and a strike to Rowdy Jordan. Pops it up again, this time on the infield. Tyler Keenan, the third baseman, makes the catch, one away. Yeah, we're <laughs> that fog, we're, they're testing these, these infielders on these fly balls, but a good job by Keenan taking charge there. That ball kind of falls in the middle of no man's land. That's what good defensive third basemen do on a ball like that. Big out there for Roth as it's just crucial for him to get Ole Miss back at the plate with a down only two here in the ninth. Dustin Skelton 0 for 3 with three ground outs. Breaking ball. All in two strikes now to Skelton. Skelton looking for something straight. Those were two, two good breaking balls there for Roth. We'll see if he goes to the well again. See Cooper telling him down in the zone. Fastball, got it by him. Strikeout for Houston Roth. Dustin Skelton now 0 for 4 in the game. They're two down in the top of the ninth. It's a good, good run there on that fastball. Really good at bat by Roth. Really just dominated that bat from the jump. Houston Roth out of the bullpen after the fog delay has retired eight of the nine that he's faced. He got a strikeout of Gunnar Halter to start his outing. And misses to Halter here with ball one. Gave, out the, gave up the two-out double in the seventh inning to uh, Jake Mangum. I beg your pardon, this is not Halter, a pinch hitter for Mississippi State, Luke Hancock. Hancock takes away for ball two. So Halter, the DH, was one for three tonight. A couple strikeouts, a single, and a run scored. And Luke Hancock in there hitting from the left side against the right-hander, Roth. Just again, 3-0. Hancock, the freshman. Takes a strike there. Luke Hancock's played some this year for Mississippi State. 18th game that he's appeared in this season. He's also got six starts. He's hitting 333. Seven hits and 21 at bats prior to tonight. And he can add to that total as he goes the opposite way, drops one in in left field. And Hancock going to try to stretch it into a double. Here comes the throw from Thomas Dillard, not quite in time. And Luke Hancock has got a two-out double. Good pinch hit move there from Chris Lamonis. It's an insurance run for Mississippi State, standing out at third base with two out in the inning. Yeah, Hancock there just patient through that entire bat and then gets a plus count. 
Serves it right into left field there for a nice double. Big two out double for the Bulldogs. I think we're gonna have a pinch runner here. Third double of the game for Mississippi State. They lead the SEC in that category. 123 doubles now on the season. And Landon Jordan will pinch run for Luke Hancock. That's my kind of day right there, Richard. Pinch hit, double, walk my way back to the dugout to some high fives, call it a night. Nine-hole hitter Marshall Gilbert, 0 for 1. Gilbert's got a walk, a sack bunt, and a fly out to center. If all he hit to center, Chase Josh Hall all the way back to the warning track. That was in the top of the seventh inning. Just on the fastball there, count goes to one and one. Roth going back to the fastball. Velo has dropped a little bit for Roth as he's in the 40s now in his pitch count. See if he keeps going back to that fastball. He's been able to locate it well most of the night. 1-1 pitch. Popped into the air into right center. Servideo, the center fielder that will make the catch. Mississippi State strands a runner. And we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Mississippi State looking for three outs. Ole Miss looking for at least two runs. Bottom of the ninth inning, Mississippi State with a 2-0 lead over Ole Miss. Game one of a three-game series. Game two scheduled for 6 o'clock tomorrow night. Fun pitching matchup tomorrow night with JT Ginn, the freshman, former first-round draft pick on the mound for Mississippi State. Doug McKenzie will pitch tomorrow night for Ole Miss. Anthony Servideo to lead things off, facing Jared Liebelt, and he takes ball one. Mississippi State's got two guys up getting loose in the bullpen, Cole Gordon and Tristan Barlow. Liebelt has worked three innings of scoreless relief. Ground ball up the middle. Flagged by Westberg. He's able to spin and make the throw to first in time to get the lead. The lead out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Boy, I'll tell you what, that's a great play, but just a huge play. Ole Miss just struggling to find base runners, and he puts a good swing on one up the middle. Really makes a nice play and a good pick over there at first base by Allen. Man, what a big play. On both ends. Westberg to get there, to be able to set, make a good throw, and Allen to bail him out with a scoop over at first base. One away in the bottom of the ninth with Gray Kessinger coming to the plate, two for three. 38 consecutive games, including this one tonight, that Gray Kessinger has reached base safely. He's got more hits than anybody else in the SEC in league games. Two and zero to Kessinger. Ole Miss has got to have a base runner to have a chance. Two and one now to Greg Kessinger. Let's see if Kessinger takes a. The ball was was down. It's a good take. Two zero. -oh. Had some good life to it. See if he sees that, uh, if he can get that fastball up in the zone again. 2 1. Now off the foot. Count evens at 2 and 2 now to Great Kessinger. Lee Belt has only allowed one home run all season. I think when you watch him pitch, you're not surprised because of what you've talked about, Matt. John, that he does keeping the ball down. 
Yeah, it's just the thing's got some really good run to it. Makes it tough. I mean, even if you you know you get a pitch over the plate, it's just tough to square those things up. That's why you see so many really effective uh, sinker ball pitchers in the major leagues. Two two coming to Kessinger. Flares it to left. Roundy Jordan. Two down in the ninth. Jared Liebelt trying to finish this off in relief of the starter, Ethan Small. Fourth inning of work for Liebelt. He gave up a single in the sixth inning. Got the Rebels three up, three down in the seventh. Back-to-back -back singles to start the eighth inning. And it felt like Ole Miss might be in business. They tried to bunt with Justin Bench. He struck out, fouling off the bunt. And then Jacob Adams, pinch hitting, grounded into an inning-ending double play. Ground ball and a fly ball from Servideo and Kessinger to start the bottom of the ninth. This is Tyler Keenan. Single in the first to walk in the fourth. The thing is just running. You can see him set inside and just Keenan just really, really saw it out of the hand, just wanted no part of it. That's a good pitch. It really is. I mean, that's just tough, especially that ball is diving in. It looks like it's coming down and in at your knees. And then all of a sudden you, you give up on it and it's running back over the plate. Going right back to it. Keenum this time able to stay alive. You saw the big difference there. That ball, as opposed to starting it, Keenan running back inside. That ball started in the inside part of the plate and up. Keenan just missed it. Again, Keenan manages to get a piece and stay alive at the plate. Mississippi State can hold on. They will play tomorrow for their fourth road series win of the year. That's impressive. Always tough to win on the road, especially in this league. Got the series win at Florida to start league play. Won a series at Alabama. Won the series at Texas A&M last weekend. The one-two to Keenan. Chops it right side. Big hop. Covering it first is Lee Belt. Off the flip from Foscu, and that ends it. Mississippi State shuts Ole Miss out. In game one of the series, Ethan Small, the starter, strikes out 10, gave up only three hits. We had a 30-minute fog delay. Jared Liebelt comes into the ball game, four innings. He gives up three hits. And Mississippi State wins game one, two to nothing. Really good night for the Bulldogs. Great pitching out of them. Big difference in the game. The Bulldogs' big hitters came up. Got some big hits for them when they needed it, and Ole Miss was unable to do so. They'll be back at it again. I imagine that pitch, pitching matchup will be must-see TV. Tomorrow it will be Doug Nikhazy on the mound for Ole Miss, JT Ginn on the mound for Mississippi State, the hero tonight for Mississippi State, Tanner Allen. An RBI double that scored a run in the third inning, an RBI single that scored a run in the fifth inning, and the Bulldogs take game number one.